Kids. Hello guys and welcome to our assembly tutorial. With this video we are going to show you how to assemble your Dryder model from WizKids series with a few simple steps. As you can see, the model is cast on a sprue in parts, so before we will start to paint the model, we have to build it first. About the Dryder. Dryder is one of the models that we have been casted in sprues. In this tutorial, we will cover the following steps. We will start by removing parts from the sprue. Then we are going to show you how to trim those parts and use sanding technique. After that, we shall check if the parts connect well with one another with dry fitting. We will also explain how to remove mold lines and of course how to glue all the parts together. Then we will also talk about cleaning and priming. So let's start! Recommended tools So for the assembling part, these are the tools that we recommend you to invest into. Sprue cutters Hobby knife, flexi senders, mold line remover, and glue. Prepare also soapy water, clean water, and paper. Those who will be needed for cleaning. Removal from sprue. So how to remove parts of the model from the sprue? There are a few ways to do it. You can use a knife or scissors. You can also twist the part from the sprue Although, we do not recommend this method because you do not have much control over the part while twisting it out from the sprue. The safest option is to use cutters. So how to approach this? First, of course, you need to choose your weapon. There are different sizes of cutters and the choice of the size depends very much on the size of the model's parts and the thickness of the sprue. If the material that the model is made of is too hard or the sprue is very thick, while using two small cutters destined for smaller parts, you can actually damage the cutter's jaws. The same goes with large cutters. If your parts are very small, it is better to use small cutters to cut those parts of the sprue. So it is a good idea to have two or three different sizes of the cutters for different parts. You can also consider the length of the cutter's jaw, but that is the subject for a more detailed tutorial. So how to cut off the part? Just take your sprue and cutters and choose the part that you want to be cut off. Then go in with your cutters between the part and the sprue, as close as you can to the model's part, but not too close to not cut the actual model itself. If you do not feel safe, just leave some more space between the part and sprue. Later you can clean it with flexi sanders, file or with a knife. Sometimes it is even impossible to cut out the model without some sprue leftovers to the surface, so just do it in a way that feels best for you and is safe for your model. When holding the cutter, it is also crucial how you hold them. While cutting, remember that the flat size of the cutters should be next to the model part. Thanks to that, you can see how close your cutters are to the model's part and you will not chop off the model itself. It is important because very often we do not have spare parts for the model and we need those that we have in perfect shape to assemble the model in the way we want it. On the sprue we have lots of parts in different sizes and sometimes we have to deal with very small ones. While cutting them off from the sprue, quite often those small parts may jump off from the sprue the moment you cut them due to the pressure and fall off somewhere to just got lost. That is why, while dealing with those kinds of parts, try to secure them with one of your hands and hold the sprue directly above the desk. The moment you locate them, put them in a chosen place or small box. About sprue. So what exactly is the sprue? The answer is quite simple, really. It is basically where the parts of your model have been casted. There are two main ways of casting the model. You can cast it as a whole and you can cast it in parts. By having the model casted as a whole, you definitely do not have to worry yourself with assembling the model. Maybe to clean it in a little bit, yes, but the model is practically ready for painting. With the sprue, you have your model in parts, which means that you have to put them together first. 
and although it means that you will have to spend more time on the model, the sprues have some merits as well. For example, you can customize your model, and that depends on the model, of course. You can choose different weapons, different positions, different hands, legs, etc. Some components are interchangeable between the sprues, so you can take parts from other models and use it in your assembly. Also, by working with models as separate parts, the painting is sometimes easier, because sometimes the position of the model or the equipment of the model may make it harder to get in some places with the brush. For example, clothing. Let's say that the model we are painting has a cloak and the armor that we can easily paint with the airbrush. To use the airbrush on the cloak and the armor as well, we have to cover the cloak while painting the armor and the other way around, cover the armor while painting the cloak. Not to mention the highlights on both of them and not always we succeed in covering everything cleanly. The same goes with the brush. Some places on the model may be difficult to... Let's say that the arm of the model is blocking our way to part of the face. It is difficult to reach and paint the face without overpainting in the arm, or arm without overpainting the face. And the same with the assembly. By using models with parts on the sprout, we can have control over every single part of the model and clean it safely before gluing the model together. Trimming and sanding. So after cutting off the parts from the sprue, you probably have some sprue leftovers on the model. Before we will start with painting, we definitely have to clean them off. So in this tutorial, we will explain two ways of trimming the model, by a hobby knife and by flexi sanders. Let's start with hobby knives. While using hobby knives, you must be very careful because this kind of tool, especially if you're working with a new blade, can be very sharp and thus very dangerous for our fingers. You may consider securing the skin of your fingertip with some plaster. For larger molds, you may use a new knife first to cut it off cleanly or to cut most of it to finish with older, less sharper knife to scrap off what's left. Remember also to not use too much force. Try more to scrap the surface with the blade than to actually cut it. The angle under which you hold your knife is also important. Thanks to that, you will not create unwanted battle damage. Then they are also flexi sanders. With this you can clean the model as well without the fear of destroying the model. There are different grades of sanders, so by changing the grade of the sander you can get a very smooth surface. If you have some big molds to erase, you can just use the lower grade of sander and then go to find the grades until you get your result. It will take more time than using the knife, but for the beginners it is definitely safer. You can also use the sander after using a knife, especially if you work with the new blade that can leave some traces behind. Flexi sanders allows you to work on convex surfaces thanks to their flexibility. That's definitely useful with rounder models like the spider body of our dryer here. Dry fitting. 
Before gluing the parts together, try if the parts of the model are connecting well with each other correctly. It is easier to check it at this point of work than later realizing that our parts do not fit one another with the glue already on the surface. To correct mistakes you will have to not only work with the part, but also clean off the old glue. The glue stains can look quite undesirable after painting and sometimes the old glue may handicap our efforts to glue those parts together again. Removing mold lines Alright, so now about the mold lines. Sometimes on the surface on the same part you can see the lines where the material that was used to make the model met together while casting. That kind of lines we call mold lines and to remove them you can use the hobby knife or sanders or special tool designed just for this mold line remover. Just take the tool, put the metal part of it on the surface of the model with the right angle and start to scratch the surface while removing the mold. And now what's important is not what you see, but what you can feel with your hand. Even after removing the mold, sometimes you can still see the line. In that case, check the surface with your finger. If you feel some lines, scratch some more. But if you feel a small surface, the mold is completely off. And after putting the base coat, you will see no trace of it. As we mentioned before, you can also use flexi sanders with very fine grit to remove mold lines as well. Sanding, although a little bit longer, is as effective as mold remover. Just use the tool that you think is the best for you. Gluing. Let's talk about glue. What kind of glue is the best for this work? For example, we will take CA glue or super glue, which is actually the same, and plastic model cement. Both of them are very good for gluing the models, but have different outcomes. Super glue, although holds parts together pretty nicely, still gives us some space for amendments. Let's say we put together a model in the wrong position or use the part that we didn't really want it to use or we just change our mind. With super glue, it is still possible to turn those pieces apart. Although that also means that while using the model in the game, some parts may fall off because of intense usage or simply by accident. With plastic model cement, we do not have this problem. The cement joins together the parts by melting the surface of plastic. After gluing those parts, it is almost impossible to tear them apart. The plastic cement definitely holds stronger than super glue, but you need to be sure that you know exactly how to put the model together because you will not be able to go back and change it. For this tutorial, we will use super glue. Remember also to take care of the environment in which you are working. Remember to have good ventilation. Do not work with closed windows or doors, especially if you are working with a lot of models. While using the glue, try not to use it directly from the tube. Of course, it depends very much on the tube 
because there are some glues that have a very small tube that allows to work with small details. But if you have a bigger tube, just put some glue on the plastic surface and then use toothpick or agile tool that allows you to adjust the glue on the chosen surface. By using the glue from the tube, we are risking that we will squeeze the tube too hard and the glue will explode on the model. It will be quite problematic to clean that. It is also very important to give the glue enough time to solidify. Do not rush your steps, because we may very well tear unsecured parts apart. And as we said before, the layer of old glue may give us some troubles later. Gluing, consider also if you want to wait with some parts to glue them after the painting. Ask yourself a question if some parts will be easier to paint while still separated from the model. Like in our case, we left head, body and spell separated. It is easier to paint those parts separately and then glue them together afterwards. If while gluing there will be some painting damage, you can always correct it simple by paint over it. Cleaning After we ensure that the model gets dry completely and all parts are holding off nicely, it is good to clean the model with soapy water. Just take some small container, pour warm water into it, and warm, not hot, and add some soap. It is especially very important while working with resin. If by chance of the resin surface will be some grease or skin oil, the paints may not attach themselves to the surface. Closing comments. During this tutorial, we covered all of the steps that you need to perform while preparing your model. From removal from the sprue, through trimming and sanding to cleaning. Dryder is one of the many customizable miniatures with plenty of parts designed to be interchangeable with other miniatures. So, if you're going to change your model somehow, you can always choose some parts from other models. We hope that this was helpful to you. Check out our next tutorial during which we are going to show you how to paint your driver model. So see you soon!